Check, check, check. Chapman Jackson. Radio. What's up, guys? I'm your host, Jackson, and today I am joined by Ben, Beal, and Patsu, and Connor in the studio. What's up, guys? How's it going? It's going good. It's good to be here, man. Dude, I'm excited to have you guys here. It's been a... Uh... Oops, a second. I'm going to make sure we're recording this. Okay, it worked. <coughs> that was a legitimate <laughs> cough yeah. button use. Cough button use. Shout out. Um, yeah. Welcome. It's been a it's been a minute since I've seen you guys. Last time was at for Patsu, we were at the EXO show in Santa Ana, and Ben, we were at the EXO show in LA. Going that was hard. hella fun, dude. That was that was a great night. Um, first of all, let's talk about Haunt Me. Um, love the record. Walk me through the process of coming up with the instrumental, and uh, just the process of putting that song together, if you will. Yeah, um, with that song in particular, I don't know, it, the the instrumental was like a throwaway, kind of, because I had made it to collab with someone else, um, and when I went to work with them, I played it for them, and they didn't like it, so I was just like sitting on that beat for a while, um, and then Ben and I started working together a lot, and I, I found it when I was just going through like project files and yeah. stuff. And I was like, oh, I've, I bet Ben could, like, do something with this. So I just sent that over. And it was, like, it was pretty bare bones at that point. It was mostly just, like, like four-bar drum loop and, like, key, like I'm trying to think what instruments are in there. It's it, just, it like, roads and, there. like, there bass. just wasn't the additional production, like, the, the soloing <coughs> and the, like, you know, you added so much texture and those little riffs. Yeah, yeah. When I'm working with uh, someone like Ben... Um, I, c I feel like I make, like, a blank slate of an instrumental for, like, Ben to do stuff over, and then my favorite part of it is, like, after I, I get stems back from, from Ben, is just, like, making it, like, super unique sounding and, like, um, kind of just trying to emphasize certain things with, like, little melodies and, like, licks and stuff with different, different instruments um, just to, like, complement whatever whatever Ben throws on there. I, I try to give you as much material to work with, like, uh, especially in Haunt Me, the, the, there's so many flow switches and uh, different cadences that I hit. Like, you know, it goes from the the smooth singing hook to the hard boom bap type rapping. And then I have that little bossa nova jazzy up and down riff where it's like, remember, I told you, no, no, no. I love yeah. that part. And, that was something that I just heard in the pocket of the beat when I first heard the drums. And then Patsu obviously came in after I recorded that and added the instrumental layer to that to perfectly complement that melody, which was nothing, it, it wasn't planned. It was just something that c ended up coming together so naturally. But it's funny because he sent me that beat. He's like, yo, I, I think I have something that you might like. And within like two hours, we had Haunt Me. That's yeah. fucking awesome. How did you guys link up uh, originally, by the way? Like, how'd you guys meet? Do you remember? I don't even know. I moved out to Cali about yeah. eight months ago, and uh, a goal of mine was to meet all the people I, you know, when I was coming up in music that I was a huge fan of, and Patsu was one of the first producers that I, I was really into um, around high school, college age. Uh, because I was just all over SoundCloud listening to different producers, finding my sound, and someone that I thought had a very similar approach to music was was Patsu. So when I got out here, I, I hit you up, and I was just like, we definitely need to work. It would be sick. But I, I think it also started through Twitter. Like We, we started interacting more once uh, I got out here, and you know, it just made sense. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think... Um I think definitely a moment that like sparked creativity was when you had you hadn't come out with the the Elijah Who collab album yet, but you had just moved here and you were playing a show in L.A. and that was like the first time we had met in person. Right. right. Um, and then I heard heard you perform like uh, what song was it off the Elijah Comic album? Shop? Yeah, Comic that, Shop. That's the one you you fuck with. I heard Comic Shop and I was like, oh my god, this is something else. So. I, I like knew we we had to had to I mean I had known like we had to work on stuff before but that really like <laughs> cemented it in uh, my brain. It's yeah. the it's the jazz. It's there there's a lot of producers making crazy stuff, but something that I, I've always appreciated about 
your production is the the heavy jazz influence and um for the most part i'd I'd say like you're a jazz musician more like more than anything and it's so sick to hear that in hip-hop production and what i've always done is you know try to use my hip uh, my jazz roots um as a major influence in my own music so it's it's literally just like the collab made so much sense and we have such a good work ethic when we work together. Like the sessions are so natural and organic. Yeah, awesome. Um, we're gonna take a little break. We're gonna play "Haunt Me" right now, um, and oh, then when yeah. we come back, we're gonna talk about influences coming up as an independent artist. But first, let's hear "Haunt Me" by Patsu and Ben Beal. Ben Beal. Around, thought you forgot me, but way to win a penny for a bitch like you. Way to win a penny for a bitch like you. Tossing in my bed, you stole my conscience, but uh, way to win a penny for a bitch like you. Criticizing every single thing I, I wake up to the soul, leave the moon, smile back. Let's have a good one. Welcome, jazz and blood dripping from my septum. Let us leave a trail of weed, see them breadcrumbs for it. Good measure, make sure it's on the record. I'm sleeping after one split if I guess I'm crashing. I have this habit of spending days on my mattress. My mental state is fragile and overwhelmingly damaged. Your body is a temple, I'ma treat it like a palace. Catwoman, Lido, Christopher walking crazy. I'm off the potion while frolicking through the daisies. Vacation is lazy in town, so save the waterworks. It's seven hours spacing out, now I'm a damn philosopher. Hate you behind the scenes, but you in my dreams. Dipping, weave through these streets when I miss a beat. On my shelf, Silverstein, swear to you the missing piece. Yeah, we may be fucked up now, but we got history. Come over when you're sober, keep the devil on your shoulder. I'm so cold, I know you're poison, but I'm here. Damn, you got talent, knock me off balance. Got hands, she's so violent, knew this would happen. Remember things I told her, we were tripping. And her mama made a choice, now she will whisper in my ear. Goddamn, Ben, you so bitch made. This song already been played. She playing with your mental, hit your temper with the switchblade. Haunt oh, me, stick around, thought you forgot me. But wait to win a penny for a bitch like you. Wait to win a penny for a bitch like you. Tossing. You stole my conscience, but uh, wait to win a penny for a bitch like you. Criticizing every single thing I do. And we are back with Ben Beal and Patsu in the studio. Um, Patsu, I wanted to talk about your song with Rav B from mm. your Reaching for a Star album, the project back so in good. 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you who don't know, I met Connor and Patsu at the Ex Society Santa Ana show where Rav happened to perform B, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah he did. Um, walk me through the process. First of all, how did you meet Rav? And second of all, uh, walk me through the process of putting that song together and also just the reaching for a star project as a whole. Yeah, so um, I found out about Rav through a friend probably like four years ago, maybe. he. I think he sent me, um, it's probably like his most popular song. I know he ended with it at that show. Um, you fuckers were asking for this yeah. one. Yeah, that, that song was insane. That was the first one my friend sent over to me. And then I like slowly dig through the rest of of rav stuff um and he just has such like a unique like voice that just like really cuts through any instrumental he like he gets on um so i i guess i just like became mutuals with him on twitter like one day 
That's how it all and starts. Then, yeah. I was going to say, shout out Twitter for connecting artists together for real, like that. Actually. It's, yeah. it's one of the best places to be as an artist. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and when when I was putting the the Reaching for a Star album together, I wanted to get like a lot of features from from people within like our kind of creative circle to um yeah to to work on with that um and rav was one of the the people that came to mind so i think i sent him probably a few instrumentals and the instrumental for b was one that i think he he really got attached to um and when when i got the instru- or the the stems back from him after he had like rapped over it it was it was like a, a crazy experience like hearing like what what he had done to that instrumental um and it's it's not like there was a lot of back and forth either i i just sent him the instrumental and then he went to work on it and then i heard what he did and i was like yeah this is perfect yeah um yeah, it was it was pretty like easy. I don't know. It, it was it was one of the the easier collabs I've I've done. But um, yeah, that was a a really cool song to work on. I don't know if I did like a whole lot to the song after. I think I actually had to take some instrumental features out of the song because it got too busy with like what what Rav did on yeah. top of it. And it's funny because you can like still kind of hear some of them in his mic picking up his headphone bleed in the 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 like finished song but um yeah that that song was super fun to work on with that that reaching for a star album i hadn't really done many collabs in the past like the album before that it was it, there were no features on it um it was just like 10 10 tracks that i had produced all myself um so on that one i really wanted to kind of push myself to work with other people more. Yeah. Um, and it was, like, it was super rewarding. I got the the Rav collab on there. I have, like, the shittiest memory. So I honestly <laughs> don't even remember, good, like, the other, many of the other collabs I had on there. But <laughs> there, was, <laughs> there was a good handful of them. I mean, it's it's hard to compare because that, that joint with Rav, it's one of the craziest, like, lyrical songs I've ever heard. He really talks his shit in terms of like do that that one part where every single word starts with b yeah is so crazy yeah um, and, dude when he performed that live in no, uh, it was awesome. la at all right oh my god i was yeah. floating yeah. yeah i was actually outside with my homie because i needed like a little air break because dude that the entire show everyone was just bouncing it was stuffy as hell yeah I, I heard it in the distance yeah. and i just sprinted back in i'm like i can't miss this song <laughs> While we're talking about collaborations, Ben, I want to talk about you and Arrow's song "Imaginary Friends" off of cartoons that you yeah. performed that night at the El Rey Theater. Run me through that. How did you meet Arrow and some of the guys on EXO, and what was putting that song together like? So Arrow and me go way back because I went to college at the University of Maryland, yep. and he's notoriously uh, one of the best rappers coming out of the DMV. Yeah. So when shout I was out at the DMV, by the yeah, way, yeah, shout out the DMV out here. Uh, so when I was in college, I became a huge fan of Kill Bill Rav because we were mutuals already, and uh, both of them were my rela- like related artists on yeah. Spotify since I made my Spotify. So for some reason, I listened to them for the first time when I was like, a sophomore in college, even though I've seen them floating around forever. And I got into X Society, and I started like really getting into their discographies, and. The name Aerospace kept popping up, and the second I heard it, I was like, oh my fucking God, this dude is crazy. Uh, one of the best like um, flows I've ever heard. His lyrics are ridiculous. His beat selection, crazy. So I was in Maryland. He was in D.C. It Just like just like me and Potsu work, and w- once I got to California, it just made so much sense. He, uh, we, I think we did a show together before we had our first session together, which was dope, and we met for the first time at the show. And then, yeah, we just, we, we became homies, we kicked it a lot, and we had a bunch of sessions, but we realized really quickly that us two on a track together are super dangerous. Like, it's, we, we complement each other really well, uh, we bounce off each other's flows because I'll hit it with a more relaxed, you know, lackadaisical flow. He'll come in with the really aggressive, 
pocket swing flow, yeah. like swung flow sorry and he's he's just insane i love working with him and i'll send him a beat and i'll get a verse back in like four hours flat <laughs> jeez we have a we have a ton of songs in the vault right now but imaginary friends was sick because i knew i wanted a feature on imaginary friends the song was super catchy but i got sick of hearing my voice on the beat i was like someone else needs to hit this and i immediately thought arrow would wash me <clears throat> sorry i should have hit the cough button. no you're, you're good <laughs> and so i sent the beat to arrow and it was the le- so we submitted the album and i was like wait we we need a feature on imaginary friends so it was the last thing we needed for the album and i was worried that it might take a few days or like even a few weeks we we really wanted to get the album out elijah was on the time crunch and i was like elijah like you just relax i promise you if we get arrow on this song it'll complete the album yeah. like it'll be finished arrow gets his verse back i think that same day saved us because we were getting really scared we like elijah had a project coming up that was already scheduled so we had to get cartoons out at a certain time yeah and oh my god the verse arrow sent back it's awesome he watched me dude like his verse is so much better than mine but i told him i'm like i'm not afraid to be out wrapped in my own song if this song is good that's all that matters that's yeah. all i care about and you're the reason the song is what it is so performing it at El Rey was surreal. The the crowd loved it. They knew no, the words too. They it was. It. I had like the bird's eye view of it or whatever. The crowd was fucking nuts for that. It was that. amazing, yeah. dude. The whole entire song they were going crazy. Yeah. Usually there's that little window right at the beginning of the song where the crowd kind of goes off. They were just jumping the entire just, time. Yeah. It was sick. Well, with that being said, we're gonna take <laughs> another quick break and we're gonna hear Patsu's B featuring Rav and Ben Beal and Elijah Who's Imaginary Friends featuring Aerospace. Let's do Hell it. Hell yeah. There's something riding inside me You told me to be better and honestly likely You told me to be more true as I cannot be You told me to be smart, you're promising I'm free You told me to be strong and belong, alarm me That otherwise my life won't be long or lively There's something when I'm gone, they don't despise me You told me don't be wrong, forgotten that I'm me Become something that I'm not Crushed between the four walls, ceiling and the floorboards I can walk, nor see four words When I talk, my speech more door Scrambled thoughts that need order Not in reach, they lost in deep waters Drawn on sleep, exhaust my zeal harder Caught in grief, I've honestly authored I don't wanna swim no more, I wanna fly Looking up at those that do But I don't identify I feel lonely when I try My dreams always seem to die I keep falling, I'm so sorry I'm appalling in your eyes Hey, show me how to be Show you how to not I will climb the tallest tree And tie the tightest knot Yeah, oh yeah, I'm flawed as hell I could never love myself As long as I carry this skill I will never feel fulfilled yeah. Show me how to be I'll show you how to not I will climb the tallest tree And tie the tightest knot Yeah, oh yeah, I'm flawed as hell I could never love myself I need sleep The sequence is bleak It reeks and repeats Week after week Increasing my fatigue I feel weak Tough to conceive I still bleed When I seem to be proceeding On reflex deceit That I could feel relief That I could seek dreams Which seemingly All my experiences deplete See at the beginning They said that I would be winning But a beautiful thought But one I no longer believe in Belief feels belittling Now I've been beaten Bested beast Depressed and defeated So rest in peace To me that felt different Guess I failed at living Guess I failed And I guess I'm feeling So my feelings is it your fault just the weather shifted and my feathers weathered uh. show me how to be i'll show you how to not i will climb the tallest tree and tie the tightest knot yeah oh yeah i'm flawed as hell i could never love myself as long as i carry this skill that will never feel fulfilled yeah. show me how to be i'll show you how From the train cross across every day, bar halfway down, I don't hesitate. Close both my eyes up for heaven's sake, hit me today. 
I just want it all to be erased Disappear with the fear and despair Disappear, all I've ever done has been afraid All I've ever done been has been this way You claim I am broken, you liken my wounds To things that you deal with with ease, I should too You make me hate me more than I should hate you It's always you, 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 but mama, me I just want to be I hope you're okay with that. Peanut butter print while I'm picking up a script. I'm a gorephobic bitch, I'm posted at the crib. And if you haven't noticed all these better ways I live, cop a better television. Oh my god, look who it is, it's Bamboo. I heard he's doing fine, but then again, I wouldn't know. I want a conversation, no I'm Ben, I probably won't. He's animated, everybody thinking he a clone. There he goes, rose gold on his throat. I can never catch a break, I'ma turn this fucking car around. Everyone is snaking, I'm a motherfucking parcel mount. I'm on a ledge where the sidewalk ends. I knew Ben from Foster's home for imaginary friends. A peanut butter print while I'm picking up a script. I'm a gorephobic bitch, I'm posted at the crib. And if you haven't noticed all these better ways I live, cop a better television. Oh my God, look who it Yo. I tapped it from the other side of heaven Need to pick up on the switches so my kids is feeling hella slim Been riding on this Nimbus, felt some distance, now I'm better Got a shelter, the bomb is going off, no one to help ya Know my niggas I was going long, Scalibur and Land along Actress in the camera like, Zack and Mary added on Hit the homie bed cause I was late to throw these bars apart And your eye be getting drunk so what I thunk, not even on the song I be high in my apartment, larking when I'm carting Black women exhausted, sky tipping with Martians Tap dancing with Carson and Mariana's trench If you ever whip the stench, close the vent The box is hot in here, promise that you not appear Pass the slip, an awkward stare And my starter spot will air, pocket watching monsters weird Call up David Copper cause they ghost him But pop up in fear when seeing arrows stomp Through the space and karma's atmosphere Yeah <laughs> Woo! And we are back in the studio with Ben Beal and Patsu Yup, yup um quick shout out to travis for tuning in right now shout I out travis just got a text saying the interview sounds great love to hear that um i wanted to talk about your guys's earlier parts of the career because i think two of you have had very standout moments patsu for for you i would say arguably that's uh x using your beats mm-hmm. um specifically the jocelyn floors beat um, and I kind of wanted to go in depth about that because I've heard conflicting stories of how that happened. But from what I, from what I understand, it was when he was visiting L.A. and you guys met in the studio. Maybe can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I don't. I feel like I've, I, I feel like I've told like friends and stuff about this, but yeah. I don't know if I've ever like made a statement about it. But um, yeah, he. Okay, so it was like summer of. 2017 yeah. I think and I had only been making music for like a year and a half or Can you so get a little closer to Yeah, me? sorry. No, you're good, man. Yeah, I had I had only started making music like a, like towards the end of my senior year of high school. Yeah. Um So it'd been like a year and a half um and I made that that I'm closing my eyes beat like super late one like weekend night my freshman year of college just like laying in bed on my laptop um not really thinking anything of it and it got a hundred likes on soundcloud within the first day which was like insane for me i'd never had like a song perform that well and then a couple months later it got posted on the the listen to this subreddit yeah and it made front page of like i think all of reddit um which was, like, a huge boost to me. Um, and then, yeah, the summer of 2017, X DM'd me on Instagram just, like, out of nowhere, and he was like, hey, I, I used your beat. It's it's going to be a hit. Like, this is going to be crazy. And I just, like, I didn't know how to react. And, like, that whole day, I was having, like, an anxiety attack because I didn't believe, like, what had happened was, like, actually real. Right. Um, so that was, like, a super surreal moment for me. Um, and I think a week or so later, 
he sent me the song and I was just like so blown away with what he had done to it. Um, and then I'm trying to think what, what happened next. Because there was two other songs that he used yeah, your yeah. beats for. So I'm Closing My Eyes was, it, it had already been an instrumental that right. he, he took. He told me he saw someone, I, I don't know if I should say this, but. Yeah, no. What? <laughs> no, we can, I was going to say we can, well, actually yeah. we're on air. No, I'll, I'll, I'll not say that, but. Um, we can talk about I, it. I'll tell you <laughs> after, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then he, we we were like FaceTiming, like like once a week and he was like updating me on on stuff um and then I just got a, a text probably a month after he had started talking to me saying oh come to the studio right now and he just sent me an address yeah and um I was trying to get more more info about it but he like wouldn't text back so I just got in the car and headed over there and thank god I I brought my laptop um I don't know why I I didn't think I was going to be producing like when I was there but I thankfully I thought to bring my laptop and I get there and the studio's in like the the basement of this crazy hotel in LA um and it was it just walking in there was one of the most insane experiences I've ever had um and we get into the studio and it's like the most insane setup I've ever seen and we get in there and he just starts picking Shiloh samples for me to like start flipping um and so I get my laptop out and I'm like shaking like in the in the studio while he's he's sending me links to Shiloh sample like Shiloh Instagram clips to like start flipping (laughs) um and so for a few hours I was just like um sitting there with my laptop I think I I made three beats but we only ended up using two of them um and those ended up being everyone dies in their nightmares right. and carry on yeah um, what about guardian angel because I knew that was also a beat right yeah that one that was a later that I, was a later time though yeah that one I I didn't find out about until I got an email from X's label saying oh here's like the info for your splits for this song <laughs> um and I was like what like what the I I didn't understand what was going on and then the song came out and I listened to it and it was just Jocelyn Flores backwards right yeah okay. um so I had no part in that yeah um at all yeah at all I didn't I did not know that song was gonna be a thing oh um, shit okay but yeah, with the those other two tracks that I produced there in the studio with him, it was it was wild. He um, he just worked super fast. Like I'd finish the beat and then I'd send it to him. He'd put his headphones on for like ten minutes and then hop in the booth. And yeah, just like crank it out. And we I I got there at probably like seven or eight p.m. that night. And I don't think we left until 3 or 4 a.m. when I was just like, I couldn't stay awake yeah. anymore. But he was, yeah, he, he was on the grind. He had crazy, like, energy and, and work ethic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ben, I wanted to talk about Smile because I've heard there's an interesting story that Connor kind of clued cl- cl- no. Um, <laughs> No. Yeah, I can't get into too much detail, but I can tell you like the the origins. Yeah. And, like, a little bit about Let's it. Let's talk about it because I knew that was I, I. We won't get into the whole legal side of it, but yeah. I know that at the time you were, this was when you were just starting to upload music, correct? Yeah. Like, Actually, like I didn't even upload it. So, uh, at that time I was 15 years old. Yeah. Which is crazy because the song has like 80 million streams across. Yeah, it's at, it's right at now. 62 yeah. million just on Spotify. Yeah, 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 and it's everywhere. There's so many, like, it's all over YouTube and people's videos. It's it blew up on TikTok. <clears throat> Sorry, no cough button again. Ah, you're good. <laughs> uh, no TikTok. Um, it w- it was like back when Musically was a thing before right. TikTok. Yeah, before TikTok. So it exploded on Musically. It had no TikTok presence until like recently, and then it exploded there yeah. but it's weird because it just keeps growing and i'm so young in the song so I, i've constantly been trying to outdo that but you know 
<coughs> we're using the cough button. Yeah, we just coughed at the same time. <laughs> it was a it was a weird process because I didn't at that time music was just a hobby. Right. I was in middle school, like eighth grade, and I was making music on a shitty mic in my parents' house where I lived. Yeah. <laughs> so, I I thought nothing of it. No idea who's the producer sent me this beat. Sophie Myers, who's the singer on it, was already on the track. And they sent me the beat, and they're like, we need a rapper on this. Like, see if you could do something. So I rapped on it. No mix or master. I just uploaded it to SoundCloud the second I was done with it without even a second thought. It started going insane, like, the second I posted on SoundCloud. Like like Patsu said, it's... I'd noticed something that I've never seen before the second it went live where I was getting crazy engagement. This like this I, I didn't even need to promote it, people were just flocking to it. Yeah. And then no idea one day uh I guess uploaded it to his Spotify page without like my name on it and stuff and I can't get into further detail. We won't, yeah. But yeah, it's been a it's been a weird journey with that one, especially because I hadn't like it was way before I knew the power of streaming, and right. that's it was like right in the early days of Spotify. I, where I was I was gonna say this was before this was when people were still buying stuff like on Bandcamp, iTunes, yeah, et cetera, yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. Bandcamp was just starting to get big because yeah. every indie artist and experimental producer, whatever, they were posting tapes on Bandcamp, and it was sick to like collect tapes and support your favorite creators. And then all of a sudden, Spotify became accessible to indie artists. But I was in middle school; I didn't know there was a music business i didn't know anything about that all i knew was i was excited when no idea messaged me like a month later and he's like oh it smiles at a million streams i was like oh cool that's sick uh what does that mean for me <laughs> radio silence but yeah yeah <laughs> uh that that's about all i could say about smile right. it's it there's definitely sentimental value with that song because it, it's just a testament to how much i've grown since when this was just a passion now it's a full-time job in my career yeah it's it's definitely cool that people it, it resonates with people and you know i have people tell me that it changed their life and saved them and you know that's that's why i make music uh but yeah i hope everyone that listens to smile could you know dig a little deeper listen to some check out some other stuff, stuff. yeah yeah <laughs> Um, so I would say that both of you guys had very big, like sudden moments in the early stages of your career and not just the early stages of your career, early stages of your life. We're both talking like working with XXX Tentacion. So you were a senior in high school, right? Uh, freshman in college, freshman in yeah. college. Uh -huh. And then with smile, you were 15 at the time. Yeah. If you guys could give yourself uh, some advice to you back then knowing what you know now what would that be do you think get a lawyer <laughs> get a say. lawyer ben you idiot <laughs> you stupid naive idiot that's like yeah that's it and i wouldn't change anything else because i'm really happy with where i am now yeah i'd, I'd say keep pushing keep smiling no pun intended no like pun intended. unrelated to the yeah. song just just stay positive and you know a lot of bullshit's gonna happen but Get a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's no, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really <laughs> wish I <laughs> had, like, a lawyer or, like, management when I was going through, like, all the X stuff. Because, like, big label people Suck. will, like, snake you yeah. so quick. No, absolutely. It's, it gets so messy. Um, and, uh, like, it's crazy that, that you can make it as an independent artist now. Um, but it's so difficult to navigate the space on your own. Like, yeah, basically absolutely. impossible. Th um, these people could tell that you're... Yeah. Like, if, if you are if you lack experience yeah. or music business know-how, like, people could sniff it out. No, it's predatory. Yeah, like 100%. 100%. Um, no, it's funny you mentioned that. I'm uh, One of my degrees I'm going for here at Chapman is music business, and, like, one of the first things they say is, well, you're up. Like, yeah. get, get a team to protect you, because these big labels... At the end of the day, the only thing that comes to mind is profit, like mm -hmm. how much money you can make. The the problem yeah. with that is it's expensive to have a lawyer. Yeah. And the the only other alternative is a, a lawyer will work on like a percentage retainer. So right. the, if they sign a deal, they get a percentage. But 
why would they do that to a kid in eighth grade who has one song on SoundCloud that's he's not making money off yeah. of, you know? So, yeah, it's I I didn't have the resources to get a lawyer. I was, my parents weren't about to get me a music lawyer because they thought I was just going through a phase. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's that's the best advice I could ever give and f- to all my independent artists out there that are coming up and starting to see profit or whatever, do not overlook that advice. Like get a lawyer no matter h- how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um we're going to take another quick break. I want to play two songs. I want to play one of my favorite songs off the Cartoons Project, Comic Shop. Yeah. And then uh, shout out Doom on that. Shout, yeah, RIP, I'm not Doom. Um, we're going to talk about that after the break. And then I also want to play Patsu, your song, Runaway. Cool. We're going to start with Comic Shop right now. Ben Beal and Patsu in the studio, Chapman yeah. Radio. All according to plan, got my voice on the record. We taking trips to Japan in the comic shop. By the lot, we focus on a Molly Womp on Hollywood is dead. You'll see your idols whipping shopping cars. Mr. Doom taught me break the norm, fuck regular. Mr. Doom taught me no idols, stay secular. None other, never needed to wonder. They hit me with the word like it's L.O. Governor. Glass half empty, we should fill it up with moonshine. Heart half full, we reuniting in due time. Glass half empty, I should pour it out for you. You're a hero to the crowd, but a villain in the news. Mask on, anybody could wear it. Got the whole world wondering when the villain appearing. I don't know when I'ma go, but I'ma need an imposter at my show. Wake up, bend in. Should know by now, but I'm zoning out. It's what it is. It all adds up. It led to this, I know. School bumper out route, pass a blunt and kick a rapper too. Got an attitude of dose swim for the power moves. Ten magnitude, the bumps got me lit up. King Gitter up, take me to your leader. So ballistic with a flow that sings to you boat. Special herbs, one and two, I'm sampling my heroes. Starting in for college, one I'm witnessing this violence. Danger doom, got my Adderall buzzing, I'm overdriving. Autopilot for the mileage, mass tap permanent. Hurdy one like 30 cents, metal face tournament. Bit of vitamin vegemin, now fucking with Benjamin. Only need one beer, yours worth of medicine. Castle tends to crumble when a beam start wilting. Trips over the wire and the fall almost killed him. Stands back, blank face, move with hesitation. Crime scene stale, just pending an investigation yeah. it's all according to plan got my voice on the record we taking trips to japan in the comic shop i'm gonna have to see you when i see you because nostalgia going crazy i swear everywhere i hear you yeah we gonna hold it down down here because you kept us all creative it's the same round here every street every mural got your face around here when the vinyl meets the needle super villain superhero is for doom Thank you. 
back in the studio with Patsu and Ben Beal. Um, that was Runaway off the Ivy League project. Patsu, let's talk about that real quick. R- run me through the process of putting that project together, and then we're also going to talk about cartoons in a second as well. Sweet. Yeah, that was like the second proper album um, I put together. The first one, Just Friends, I, I, I put together in maybe like two months it was like a stupid amount of, of music on there. It's like 22 tracks, I think. Um, I think there were like 28, and I ended up throwing like six of them out. Um, but th- the that first one, Just Friends, I spent like two months on. And Ivy League, I wanted to spend a little more time on, so I think I spent like nine or ten months on that one. Yeah. Um, no features on that, so it was all just like me throwing ideas like into Ableton um and it was like a very like explorative album for me because that first album I was just like trying to prove to myself that I could make an album um but with that second one my goal was really to like work on sound design and like cleaning up like these spaces I was creating I wanted to be like super deliberate with um kind of how these songs would sound um and yeah that that whole project was just kind of like me trying to improve at I don't know how I, how I think songs like should sound like how I think or how I wanted like the the music that's in my head to like get out there I guess yeah, yeah. no totally mm-hmm. um Ben Let's talk about cartoons. Um, walk me through collaborating with Elijah. Who? How did you guys link? Or was was it another mutual Twitter? Yep. Shout out Twitter. Shout out Twitter. Um, walk me through the process of recording that project because we, as you had mentioned earlier, off off air, um, Elijah, who is in was in Australia at the time, yep. right? He's all over the place. He he had just left China at the time because I think his visa expired and he was living there with his girlfriend. So. Then he moved to, uh, I think he was in Brisbane. I, I don't know where he was in Australia, but th- it was hilarious because we were we were talking all the time and interacting because we have a lot of the same friends in the in like our music community, whatever. Yeah. And then eventually it just led to him sending me some beats, me sending him some demos back. Within like a day or two, we were like, okay, we got to make a project. Yeah. But he was in Australia, so it was the most annoying communication method because I. I would text him. He he'd send me a beat. I'd record on it. So excited about it, waiting for feedback, and it would take like ten hours to hear back from him because we were in completely different sides of the country, yeah. like or not country world. The world, yeah. Yeah, a little bigger than the country. <laughs> and it it ended up the the creation process of cartoons was we made like forty songs together. Like we had such a fat 
uh, selection. And then we spent, after we had this whole entire, like, really uh, surplused catalog, we kind of spent, like, a week just slimming it down until we had our 10 favorites. Yeah. And that ended up being the, the ultimate track list. But it, it was super organic, just, just like working with Patsu. It was just... The second we started working, we just got into such a comfortable rhythm where we knew exactly what we wanted to hear from each other. Uh, it, it was so easy to to write to the stuff he was sending me because it, it was like he was reading my mind in terms of the vision I had for it. And yeah, it it was just a great experience overall and I'm super happy it came out when it did because I, had ju I was a senior in college and I had to leave in March because the pandemic started, they, yeah. they kicked us off campus. So I, in like, you know, that, that first couple months of pandemic where everyone was losing their fucking minds, I was just in my parents' basement, like back where I started it. It reminded me a lot of when I was making songs like Smile and Good Morning and all my earliest stuff. I, I was just in the, the basement every day and I was like, oh shit, wait, I just finished college. So I have to get a job. And then Elijah started sending me those beats, and I'm like, okay, I don't need to get a job. Yeah. I just spent all my time just making it happen, just working as hard as I could. I was writing, like, four songs a day. Uh, you could confirm with Elijah if you don't believe me, but there there were days where I'd send him, like, five demos back because Damn. I was so motivated at the time to not get a job. Yeah. <laughs> and it ended up, it ended up working out for the best because I ended up dropping the album, moved out to California, started working with Patsu. I'm still working with Elijah. I, I'm just really comfortable with where the the music process is right now and made such good friends along the way. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, we heard Comic Shop during our break, which is essentially a tribute track to Doom, R.I.P. Yeah. Doom. Um, I want to talk to you guys about some of your influences on music, not just with the artists themselves, but in pop culture, media, whatnot. Run me by what influences you guys to make music. Who or what, I should say, influences you guys to make music. It was, uh, my, my earliest influences are definitely from my, my immediate family. Like, uh, my dad, my uncles, my grandpa, they put me on to such a cacophony of music when I was super young. So I was listening to a lot of classic rock a lot of uh, a lot of jazz, a lot of fusion, and I they they never really exposed me to rap. That was more of a self discovery. Um, I was at summer camp and I had a counselor who would wake us up every morning to "Good Morning" by Kanye. Uh, like he'd said, it, he'd he'd put his iPod Classic in the iHome and play "Good Morning," and then I used to steal his iPod and listen to like Biggie, Big L. Tupac, uh, like N.W.A., and it my my like curiosity peaked because I was like, wow, there's music with curse words in it. This is crazy. <laughs> so the, in the in the years to come, I was just I'd I'd stay listening to to bands like Steely Dan, uh, Pat Metheny. Um, my, my I would steal records from my grandpa. I mean, not steal. He'd let me he let me raid the the archive, yeah. but. I was listening to he he had this um box set of everything Bill Evans ever put out. So, I had access to Bill Evans' entire discography in in one little box set. So, I fell in love with like like sleepy jazz and smooth piano and the dusty sounds and that's that seeped into my to to my love of hip hop. I found the rappers that were merging that influence and that that turned into me listening to Doom, Mad Lib, uh, a lot like this was obviously a little down the road. Um, Flying Lotus, Earl Sweatshirt, like the early days of Odd Future, I was that changed my life for sure. Yeah. Um, Mac Miller, when I first heard like Kool Aid and Frozen Pizza and Nike's on Your Feet, I was like, damn, there are really people that are channeling this this jazz energy, and it's it's the same way that jazz fusion in like the '80s kind of morphed into its own animal. I feel like hip hop was going down a very similar direction around the early t or uh, late 2000s. And I kind of rode that wave and that's when I started making music. Awesome. Patsy, what about you? Um, 
like thinking about it, I've noticed I've always been like super drawn to like really rich harmony in music um, that I think stems from jazz, like a lot of like seventh, like ninth, and like suspended chord voicings. Um, and it wasn't until I started making lo-fi and I was like digging through all these jazz samples that I realized like, oh my God, this stuff is, this is, this music is like so different. It's like, it's so inspired. There's so much just dope shit like taking place. Um, and I had taken like classical piano lessons growing up. Um, so I had like a bit of a technical facility on keys, um, but I had never really dipped into jazz. So my freshman year of college when I was getting super into like flipping beats and samples, um, I started trying to self-teach myself jazz piano. Um, and eventually I ran into someone that could start teaching me. So I started taking lessons. Um, and then I got into, I, I just, from, from there, I just like fell deeper into the, the jazz, like rabbit hole. Um, and there's so many kinds of music, like music under the jazz umbrella, so many different like subgenres of it. Um, and all of it is just so cool to me. Like, like a lot of the time I'll be listening to a solo in the car and it'll just, I don't know. I'll, I'll just sit there and like awe at like what these these people from like the 50s and 60s were were able to do um and like it's it's really cool to see how people in the jazz community have like continued to innovate that sound from like because um with like people like like Domi the the keys player um so good she like takes a lot of interesting language that you'd find in like 50s and, and 60s bebop um jazz playing but she she brings such like a a contemporary sound to it um so i don't know T to me jazz is just like there it's just such an open-ended kind of music that that l like it opens a lot of doors for for creativity and like exploration yeah um, we're going to take another quick break. We're going to play two songs. We're going to play Ho Cakes by MF Doom. And we're going to play Eucalyptus by Ben Beal and Elijah Who. Let's hear it. Let's get it. Keep your holes in check. Girl and she wants me to duke her. I told her I'll come scoop her around eight. She said, that sounds great. Shorty girl's a trooper. No matter what I need her to do, she be like, Super. on his own throne, the boss like King Cooper. On the microphone, he floss the ring. Super. Average MCs is like a TV blooper. MF Doom, he's like DB Cooper. Out with the moolah. I let her get her outfit just to cool her off. She said, niggas ain't about shit. I wonder if she meant it, I doubt it The way it be in her mouth, she can't live without it I can't live with this, handle your business Feeling this, stay on a scandalous whole shit list One pack of cookies, please Mr. Hooper It's fun smacking rookies, he is the Look like a black Wookiee when he let his beard grow Weirdo, brown skin, it always kept his hair low Rumors has it, it's a S-curl accident Doom was always known to keep the best girl's backs bent Some say it's the eyes, some say the accent a lot of guys wonder where their stacks went I call her thunder thighs with the fatty swoller Only mess with high rollers, do what daddy told her No matter the city, she with me to do the thang thang Working the coochie hoopty, chitty chitty bang bang Same name on the titty as on the name ring Pretty like baby D or all in the same gang Keep my eye on her, really don't trust her But I treat her like a daughter I Taught her how to bust a nut And the heat to turn beef to horse meat chalupa Teach her how to hold it, of course he is the See most cats treat her like fufa Or beat her to a stupor Take it from the You need to make her feel cuter And lay down the G like Lufa Everything will be Do for her Keep her in a new fur So she looks sweet when she go to meet the Got the Buddha, get the grenadiers Twist it, put it in the air Come here, kiss it 
Listen here, Scooter, let her try to bag you When she's on the rag, never let her fry the ragu Which will have you under some type of spell crying dag Boo, her name on your back in a tattoo Whether a bougie or a nerd hole street chick you Don't call a wife if you met her at the freak nick You don't want her, don't waste her time, I'll dupe her And be a father to your child like the Super. He keep his hoes in check Sends him out to get glows from all frozen necks Tell him take his clothes, leave him posing naked for real Better yet, get him for the check off the record deal Find out where he keep the tech and the blue steel Make sure for extra wreck, let him know how you feel And while he's running down to All-Star Weekend to ball I'm coming with the U-Ball Work on myself, gotta nurse my dumb ass back to hell. Why you so distant? Who's here to listen? No one with a show done and the curtains closed on the drogue gun. Find a better life, I'll have more fun. Put a better price in the storefront. Pick your poison, better be a choice that you could live with. All that glitters isn't gold in this flower. Eucalyptus, I got people walking by me on the street. They're taking pictures. Solar energy been fueling me. Can't wait to live a clip. So, I've been going, but I hope it's somewhere comfortable. They love me when I'm gone, but when I'm here, I feel disposable. I should be in Destructible, but vanish when the curtains close. Screw up, guys, I'm going home. Excuse me if I'm going. I don't know where I've been going, but I hope it's somewhere comfortable. They love me when I'm gone, but when I'm here, I feel disposable. I should be indestructible, but vanish when the curtains close. Screw up, guys, I'm going home. Excuse me if I'm going ghost. Josie into the song. <laughs> and we're back in the studio <laughs> with Ben Beal and Patsu. Um, we're nearing the end of our interview. I wanted to ask you guys some more lighthearted rapid fire questions if you guys are down with that. Um, first question being, what is your guys' favorite video game? Either of you. Um, Sly Cooper. That's, that's easy for yeah. me. Yeah. Not too in town. Dude, Ooh, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. That's so tough, but, like, I don't know. I just love that game so much. Sly Cooper is so badass. Yeah. Like, you shit. you also love Rust, too. Yeah. You play Rust. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I have, like, uh, 1,100 hours in that game, but, like, it's not even <laughs> in my, like, top 10 favorite That means you're technically a master of it. Yeah. Isn't yeah. it 1,000 hours? Ten, I think 10,000. 10, 10, 10, so I'm, okay. like, 10% of the way there. That's yeah. that's an insane thing to have like a, a that's a notch on your belt for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Connor, what about you? What's cuz yeah. you're you're pro. Like yeah. I, I heard you're lit with it. Yeah, yeah. I was I was professional at Counter-Strike for a little bit. Were you few really? Tournaments. Yeah. 
Whoa. Yeah, that okay. paid for some stuff when I was in high school. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, what's the current? Is it is it Counter Strike? Is that the uh... right now? Probably Rust. Just we play that all day. It's like, <laughs> probably gonna go home as soon as Ben Beal gets out of our house. We're gonna be right back on Rust. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, ben, ben. What about you? Favorite video game? Uh. Like all time, like yeah, just straight up all time, like go. has to be Modern Warfare two. Okay, because that's a solid pick. dude, the Jack in the production studio just gave a thumbs up. Yo, Jack, <laughs> you you know it's good. You probably got roasted in the lobby too. I was I was a target, but I uh yeah. So sixth, seventh, eighth, or yeah, yeah, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, all I did. Modern Warfare two. I would, I played sports, so I'd I'd go to school. Have like a practice after after school, yeah. And then until my mom came into my room to yell at me to go to sleep, I'd be just on Modern Warfare Two with my friends. And I don't know, it's also nostalgic as hell because I've n- I'm since then I've never had a video game experience that felt as uh, like cathartic as Modern Warfare Two. Not to get philosophical, no, but <laughs> uh, I'd say my current one is probably it's probably like. Pokemon Diamond, the remake or just Diamond? Well, I think the the remake is pretty true to the original. Yeah. So I just say like Diamond. overall Diamond because yeah. I played the remake and it was That's so fair. fucking fun. Have you have you played the Arceus Legends? I one also yet? loved it, but it was I I didn't finish it because I don't know it it was so different. I, I so long. I just finished it. I was kind of it was kind of underwhelming. Yeah, it was also like my favorite part about Pokemon these days. And I, I play it for that nostalgic value. Like, yeah. I'll have the, I'll, I'll watch some TV and play it, like, passively. Uh, it Also, just getting the Switch, like, inspired me to just, like, get back into it. Yeah. My, my favorite part is getting shiny Pokemon. Yeah. And in, in Ar- Arceus, I got, like... It's so easy. It, I got, like, every shiny no, Pokemon, the, the and odds, I have nothing to do. The odds of it are, like, 1 in 400, which is insane because Facts. in like the main games it's like one in like a couple thousand yeah or something like and it was that. such an it was the best feeling ever when you'd get it in like a game that yeah. it was so hard to do so that was like what i do once i beat the game yeah but arceus i like on the way to beating the game i got like every yeah, single shiny pokemon like... so i was like this is a dud <laughs> but yeah i i do that franchise man i want to go to tokyo so bad and go to like the pokemon centers and the pokemon cafes yeah. Um, all my friends that went there said it's like the craziest experience. That'd be awesome to do. Yeah. Um, all right. Go to like favorite meal, favorite food, if you will. Canes. Canes? <laughs> Dude. Okay. Nah, I'm guess I'm guessing there's <laughs> I mean, yeah. Canes is up there, but ev- like every morning, like the first thing I consume for the day is a strawberry banana smoothie with apple juice in it. And valid. Yeah. Um yeah, it, it's I started having like really bad stomach problems um, like four years ago, and that was like the the thing I found that I could like always eat and not have a problem with, and somehow like I've literally had one every single day for four years, and I it's still like my favorite thing to to put in my body. That's so, healthy like, though. That's yeah, boosting like the immune I system. Mean, I think. I don't know. Maybe. I feel like apple juice has so much sugar in it. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But but it's fruit. Yeah, it is fruit. <laughs> got, got the vitamins in there. Ben. Oh, this is so hard. I love food. Dude. I eat so much food. Every Dave's day. Dave's hot chicken. In fact. Da- yeah, Dave's hot chicken. I got I got a notification from Uber Eats that I was in the top zero point zero zero one of customers for Dave's Hot Chicken. <laughs> no way. That's insanity. <laughs> and I've been in California for, for like, eight yeah, months, eight and months. I had it for the first time like four months into being here. So that is like, I also went home for a physical, and my doctor was like, "What the fuck are you eating, dude? Your cholesterol is through the roof." It's the Dave's Hot Chicken. Yeah. I eat a lot of it. I haven't eaten it since I had that physical because my doctor is like, "You're gonna die." Like you're gonna die super you're just young, straight you, up. yeah. But I wouldn't say it's my favorite. It's just like if I see it, the picture on Uber Eats looks so good, so I always get it. Uh, I don't know. I I like a nice I like a nice steak. Yeah. I like my dad makes really good salmon that I'd put against any Michelin star chef. Uh, I, my my favorite meal is definitely just like. A nice steak or salmon with Brussels sprouts and some mashed potatoes. I love it. Yeah. Uh, coming from real quick off topic, coming from the East Coast, what do you think has better food, New York or LA? New York. New York. Yeah. It's like not there. 
the one saving grace of LA is that it has the best Mexican food I've ever had in my entire life. Yeah. And it's there. You could find good Mexican food in New York, but it's not like not even comparable to how good it is here. But I'd say the, the pizza in New York, the Italian food in general, and, uh, the, ch- the Chinese food, like Chinatown in New York, like the dim sum, um, the the deli sandwiches like the bagels <laughs> it's just not it's not here i mean yeah. there there definitely is good like asian and chinese food here but i haven't had a good bagel or a good slice of pizza here damn and that, really as as a young jewish gentleman like myself <laughs> i need my bagels <laughs> um go to film for either of you or favorite film i should say movie yeah. Do you have one in mind? Favorite film? Know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd say probably like Howl's Moving Castle or I, I also really enjoyed The Conjuring. I'm a huge horror fan and I thought it was like, it was really refreshing to have an insane horror movie drop during my generation especially like at the peak of when I was consuming horror, it, it was shook me to my core. Um, I'd also say like uh, Rushmore, Wes Anderson is up there. Yeah. I fucking love that movie. It, it's hard because I, I, it, it fluctuates. Like, dude, I just saw Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, the new A24 movie. Yeah. And I'd put it up there with my top ten. Really? It was... And, everyone's agreeing right now like it's yeah. a very popular opinion that this is one of the best movies to come out in a minute it is so fucking good i couldn't recommend it more. i gotta check it out man damn so don't take an edible for it don't it's too intense okay. it's way too intense <laughs> it's yeah it, that that rocked me all right but and my roommate didn't take an edible and he was like after the movie he's like dude you looked so funny the entire time he's like your jaw was just dropped and you looked like you were freaking out and i was I, uh, he wasn't wrong <laughs> but yeah definitely go see that that's the plug of the uh plug of today episode yeah, yeah. patsu dude i cannot think of like a single movie that i <laughs> really enjoyed right click now. with adam sandler yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> click do you know? I feel like you would know what my favorite movie is, but I, I mean, literally you have that poster up everywhere. Like in your dorm, you had like three copies of <laughs> Click up on the wall. He has he has a uh, every single printing of Click on VHS. I've seen um, the Twitter bio. Yeah, maybe Morbius. <laughs> oh yeah, Morbius. Morbius. Oh dude, I love <laughs> best movie. Best um, Marvel. They didn't movie even turn period. the lights off. The, <laughs> the live action. Uh, to live action Fairly Odd Parents with Drake Bell. Oh my god. Oh my god. I forgot that exists. Oh, it exists. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, Morbius. Yeah, I gotta be Morbius. Yeah, yeah for me. I, I actually had some friends go to see it for the shock value because they were like, if we go in knowing it's bad, it's we're gonna have a good time. Yeah. And they texted me after and they were like, Yo, it was so good. Like I'm not even kidding. Like it was really? actually good. I was like, I'm still not gonna see it. Yeah. But you're you're lying. Like yeah. there's no way. You're they the were only, being serious about it. You were the only people to say it was good in the entire yeah. world. Yeah, but uh, we're not plugging Morbius yeah, out here. Yeah, no. no. Don't go see Morbius. We're not Jared Leto fans out no. here. Oh, <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> no, <nah>, you're good. <laughs> uh, last question before we head off. Um, what advice can you give to any? Up and coming producers, independent artists out there who are still trying to find their way in music and in the music industry. For either of you, lawyer, lawyer, we talked about yeah, it before. Yeah. No, but, but yeah, I, lawyer. Like some actual like creative advice. Just make whatever you want. I've been getting in my head recently, th- like thinking way too much about what I think people want to hear, and it's definitely ruining the creative process for me. You could tell when I'm having fun recording. Like, when you listen to my song, you could tell if I was feeling myself. And if I'm trying to force some shit that I think is going to just perform well, it really impedes the quality. So I've been getting back to my roots recently, like, working with incredible people like like Patsu. Like, we had so much fun in the sessions. Uh, just sending ideas back and forth is, like, it's, like, reigniting that spark that really drew me to 
just music in general. Like I feel like I, I was back in my room recording Smile. Like, like I said a couple times, it's the, there was a feeling when I first started where it was like nothing compares to making music. And I hadn't felt that in so long, especially like during quarantine. And then made cartoons, we made Haunt Me, we're working on a ton of other stuff and it's I, I have that energy again. Like I wanna keep making shit. So like the, the best advice I could give is literally make whatever you want as like keep having fun with it. The second it's not fun, reevaluate why you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, honestly I think I would give like the same sort of advice because like when I I don't know, like twenty seventeen, twenty eighteen making music for me, it was like such um a different process than it is now because i wasn't nearly as like familiar with like how to how to make music um i guess so everything i was doing was super um all over the place every every next song i would make sounded like so different from the last one i felt like um i was just doing so much exploring in like the early stages of that and I really don't have that anymore. Like, I feel like I'm kind of set in my ways and I've conditioned my ear to the point where like sounds I used to use and like sounds I used to go for, I'm just like, oh yeah, I shouldn't, shouldn't be doing that. So I feel a lot more like limited in what I can be doing and it's changed the creative process for me a lot. And I don't know, I don't know if, there's a way to like keep yourself from getting to that point but just like if you're if you're starting to make music like and you're really enjoying it like enjoy that that um I guess era of it for yourself like as much as you can and like be as as creative and explore as many like things as you want to yeah awesome well I think that wraps up our interview Thank you guys so much for coming in today. That was awesome having you guys in. I really appreciate that. And I know our listeners really appreciate that. If they, if, uh, if anyone wants to find more about your guys' uh, music, where can they find you guys? Um, I'm on like all, all the streaming platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. He's and on stuff. all the websites. <laughs> I'm on every <laughs> single website. Um, yeah, under Potsu, P-O-T-S-U. Um, should be should be uh able to find me yeah um um at on um, bambeel on twitter and instagram uh i think that's like the only two that really matter you can search ben beal on spotify apple music uh I, yeah i guess those are the only two that matter it's the title i guess um yeah awesome it's been real well thank you guys so much for coming in today and uh to our, our listeners at home, we will be sure to upload this to YouTube for playback. But let's wrap this up with Haunt Me One Last Time by Patsu. Never and enough ben times. <laughs> I have this habit of spending days on my mattress My mental state is fragile and overwhelmingly damaged Your body is a temple, I'ma treat it like a palace Catwoman, Lido, Christopher walking crazy I'm off the potion while frolicking through the daisies Vacation is a lacy in town, so save the waterworks It's seven hours spacing out, now I'm a damn philosopher Hate you behind the scenes, but you in my dreams Tipping, weave through these streets when I miss a beat On my shell, Silverstein, swear to you the missing piece Yeah, we may be fucked up now, but we got history when you're sober, peep the devil on your shoulder I'm so cold, I know you're poison, but I'm here Damn, you got talent Knock me off balance Got hands, she's so violent Knew this would happen Remember things I told her we were tripping And her mama made a choice Now she will whisper in my ear Goddamn Ben, you so bitch made This song already been played She playing with your mental Hit your temper with the switchblade Haunt oh, me Stick around, thought you forgot me But uh, wait to win a pennant for a bitch like me Way too independent for a 